You're listening to Living Full Out with Nancy Soleri. As a successful motivational speaker and trusted life coach, Nancy knows how you can live the life you want regardless of the challenges you face. Although she's legally blind, Nancy's mission is to inspire others to overcome obstacles and live life full out. Call in at 800-333-0001 to ask Nancy for advice on topics such as relationships, finances, business, health, and more. Just call 800-333-0001. Once again, that's 800-333-0001. And now, here's Nancy. Hello, and welcome to the Living Full Out Show. I am Nancy Soleri, and today we're going to be talking about fear. We all have fears. I mean, my goodness, fear of heights, fear of dying, fear of public speaking speaking, fear of being kidnapped, which we'll talk about. Our inspirational guest did that. So coming up in our next segment. So we're going to be talking about fears of all different kinds. So again, if you have a fear that's keeping you up at night, that's heavy on your heart, call into the show. This is the time. The number is 800-333-0001, 800-333-0001. And as I promised, our inspirational guest coming up, Stanley Alpert, he's going to share with us about when he was kidnapped. Believe it or not, that is a fear that a lot of people have of being kidnapped or abducted. So he'll share with us about that. And if you have any questions about today's show, we'd love to hear from you. You can email us at connect at livingfullout.com. Again, that's connect at livingfullout.com. And we're happy to get resources for you to get you over those fears. And if you feel that you have an inspirational story, you'd make a great guest on our show, we'd like to hear from you. We'd like to share your story with our audience. You can reach us out to us again at connect at livingfullout.com. Now, we have a lot of people who want to go back and listen to the shows again and again, just because maybe there's so much information that you might have missed. You can go to livingfullout.com, click on the radio show tab, click on the speaker button. You'll hear today's show and all of our shows by going to that resource page. So we are going to jump into the show talking about fear. Let's go talk to one of our callers and see what's going on with them. Hello. Welcome to the Living Full Out Show. Hi. Thank you. Welcome to the show. Thank you. So how can we help you today? What's going on? Um, I have a very overprotective parent. They don't like me going out or having any girlfriends or really having a social life outside my home and I call to get some advice on it. And how old are you? I just turned 20. Just turned 20, okay. And the reason I ask that question is, you know, parents are always going to be parents. You know, when you were born, you were their little treasured, (laughs) treasured little bean that they created, right? And whether you're 20 or whether you're newborn, they're still going to be overprotective. Now, given all that, you are, you're stepping into your own, right? And there's things that you want to experience and explore and you need that freedom to do it is what I'm hearing. So when you talk to them about things that you'd like to do, um, what, what is their response? Um, they're not really angry, but they, they're pretty firm on me not going out and doing the things that I'd, I'd prefer to do. And, and, and have you asked them why? And what is their reason for the why? Um, I've been a little scared to confront them on that. Mmm, but look at there, there's an opportunity, right? See, in life, you have to ask why. The why is a very important question. So if you ask them, why don't you want me to go out? Why don't you want me to date? Why can't I go on that trip? I'd be very curious to know their answer because a lot of times it comes from something that happened in their life. Maybe it was something that happened to a a friend of theirs, child, right? To understand the why will allow you to have that conversation And part of them letting you go, part of them knowing that you're really ready to do those things on your own is having that mature conversation. When they see you kind of step up and you're like, you know what, this is what I want to do and this is why, when they hear your conviction, they hear your passion for what you want to do, they're going to know, they're going to know that there's a new sheriff in town, right? They're going to know that you, you are taking control like you 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 want to do this but when you come into it kind of you know not so strong kind of wishy-washy they might feel like you're not ready yet 
You see what I'm saying? So while you may not want to get involved in confrontation, well, you may not want to press the press your luck or press their buttons. Sometimes in life, you got to go for it. In order to make change happen, you have to shake it up. You have to take risk. But I promise you, just just ask a couple of questions, but ask them why, and let that be the guide for your conversation. Okay. Okay, I'll try that with them. Oh, you're gonna do great. I promise you, you'll do great. And in fact, call them today. Tell them you want to do one thing. You know they're gonna say no, and then ask them why. Okay. 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 All right. Thank you for calling in. Thank you for your advice. You're welcome. So, what a perfect example. Somebody who's just. Er, gosh, he just wants to get out of that shell, out of that box, and and find himself and and live full out. I I love that. I feel that. And so, hopefully, that caller will take my advice and be able to ask the tough questions, but allow change to come into his life so he can grow and live full out in a big way. We're going to go back to the phone lines now and talk to another one of our callers. Hello, welcome to the Living Full Out Show. Oh, thank you very much. I have a a little problem. Uh I'm an 86-year-old lady, and I have a dear friend who's also 80-plus. And um, she's thinking of downsizing her home and going to live into a a senior citizen community. And she's healthy. She can drive. She's fine. And she has a nice place to live. And so I don't think that she should do this. And we get into these little arguments. Mm -hmm. But what I am trying to avoid is getting into a big argument with her and getting into a heated discussion with her over this difference of opinion about where we should live as we're getting older. Mm -hmm. And I was wondering if you could help me uh, talk to her in such a manner that I don't get upset with her or she doesn't get upset with me. Well, let me ask you a question. Is it that you have to live at the same place? Do you have to live at the same place? Oh, no. Okay. Oh, no, no. She, okay. no she's just telling me that she's thinking of doing this because mm-hmm. she doesn't have anyone. She is not going to have anyone close to her living here in the state so, and so in the city. So here's, and, here's, uh, so here's my thought. Here's my thought. And I, and, I, and I love that you brought up this question. But the thing is, is if, since you don't have to live at the same place, it's not like you're looking to room together or it wasn't like a oh, grand plan that you were going to stay at the same place, I would let her make her decision, okay? And, and if she is going to move and if she needs to make lifestyle changes, maybe that's at some point giving up driving or doing different things, I think you've got to let her do that because it's important everybody's going to have, we're talking about fear today, for example, on this show, and yes. everybody has fears of fear of dying, fear of being alone, fear of falling, yes. and we don't know where her fears come from. Maybe she was over overprotected as a child. Maybe things happened to her over her lifetime that made her mm-hmm. scared when she gets older, and especially if she doesn't have that family support. I think right. that's what those communities are for. And, and and she might actually be able to evolve and grow into her later years by being around other people because a lot of these communities, you know, there's there's card games that you can join, there's movie nights, yeah. there's, you know, and that might be a nice social a connection for her. Now, at the same time, she shouldn't let you do she should let you do your own thing, right? She shouldn't hold you back. (laughs) You just want to be supportive of each other. And so when you fear this conversation getting into an argument, it really shouldn't be an argument. Because if you love your friend, which I know you do, you want her to feel safe, right? Yeah, she. uh, I want to stay in my own home. And and you should. I'm very happy here, and I have children, and Right. And I, so I you should. To them if anything ever happens to me. Right. And so I, I'm i not thinking at all mm-hmm. about leaving my home at this moment in my life. But do you, but do you, but do you see, but do you see how that's okay? It's completely yes, okay. I do. I do. And, and I, I really have been thinking about this and I'm so happy that I'm talking to you because I did want some, an, another opinion. I wanted mm-hmm. some advice and, and uh, from someone that knows knows a little bit about this, and so well, and here's and here's calling you, and here's what I know about you, 
is you you've learned this over the years, I'm sure. Sometimes in life you just have to let go, right? And this is one of those times you got to let go and let her do her thing and you do yours and just be friends. Okay? But I really appreciate you calling in and I hope that you have a really great day, okay? Yes, and thank you very much. I wish you the same. Oh, thank you so much. Have a good day. Bye. So what a great call, and and really I thank everybody who calls into the show. We'll be taking more of your calls later on. Uh, We'll be coming right back with Standy Alpert, who will be sharing with us about being kidnapped. How crazy, what a fear. Stay with us, we'll be right back. Dad, this is fun. I didn't think I liked kayaking. Well, I'm glad you enjoyed it, but I think it's time to head back in. Okay. Can we come back? Sure. Tomorrow? <laughs> Let's check with Mom. Hey, be careful getting out of the boat. It's a kayak, Dad. <laughs> I'm going to return the kayak. Let's make sure you have everything. Yep. Can we walk home? How about a taxi? 233 North Maple, please. It's a short fare from your neighborhood to your naturehood. Visit discovertheforest.org to find a neighborhood park or green space near you. Also, find fun activities to do like boating and biking or camping and hiking, plus much more. It's all right in your naturehood. Best day ever. A public service announcement brought to you by the Ad Council and the U.S. Forest Service. Don't you wish that getting your child to eat right, move more, and spend less time in front of a screen could be as easy as pushing a button? It might not be that simple, but you do have more power than you know. And you can maximize that power with proven strategies, tips, and tools from the National Institutes of Health's We Can, or Ways to Enhance Children's Activity and Nutrition program. We Can offers all kinds of resources, including fun recipes and activities the family can do together to show you the way to live a healthier lifestyle. We're not saying it's easy. We are saying that it can be done. Take the first step today. Call 1-866-359-3226 for a free We Can Parents Handbook. And be sure to visit the We Can website at wecan.nhlbi.nih.gov for free information, too. A message from the U.S. Department of Health and Human Services. Today, my new dad and I shot off a rocket in the park. Today, my new son and I failed to shoot off a rocket. He knew exactly what to do. I had no clue what I was doing. We set up the rocket. We set up the rocket. Hit ignition. Hit ignition. And then? And then nothing. (laughs) (laughs) Sometimes I laugh when I'm frustrated. Then out of nowhere, the rocket launched into the air. The rocket did get into the air. I've never seen anything fly so high. And then crashed into a kite. Look out! Look out! And then the pond. I'll never forget that day. I'll never forget that day, even if I tried. You don't have to be perfect to be a perfect parent. Thousands of kids in foster care will take you just as you are. For more information on how you can adopt, visit AdoptUSKids.org. A public service announcement from the U.S. Department of Health and Human Services, Adopt U.S. Kids, and the Ad Council. When I was little, I didn't talk for a long time. I liked things to always be the same. Anything new or different would scare and upset me. I was very sensitive to lights and sounds. It was almost like I had bigger eyes and ears than everyone else. So I built secret hiding places where nothing could get in. I didn't like looking people in the eye. It made me feel uncomfortable. I'd throw big tantrums over little things like when my socks didn't match. Sometimes I'd do the same things over and over. Until one day, I found out I had autism. My family got me help. Slowly, I learned how to live with it better. You can see signs of autism in children as young as 18 months. Early intervention can make a lifetime of difference. Learn the signs at autismspeaks.org slash signs. Brought to you by Autism Speaks and the Ad Council.
You're listening to Living Full Out with Nancy Soleri. A professional motivational speaker, Nancy can help you overcome obstacles and start living full out. Call in with questions live at 800-333-0001. Once again, that's 800-333-0001. And now, here's Nancy. Thank you for joining us. I'm Nancy Soleri, and this is the Living Full Out Show. And today we're talking about fear. Think of well, think of what is your biggest fear. What do you fear most? When we're children, it's that scary goblin in the closet or under the bed. But today, as adults, it might be fear of driving. It might be fear of going out at night. It might be fear of dying. It might be so many different fears that can stress us out and limit our ability to live full out. It's important that although it's a scary and stressful topic to talk about, it's important that we address our fears, that we really acknowledge them and figure out how we can get around them. Believe it or not, there are some fears out there, like for example, fear of flying, where there are schools that you can go to where they'll do like an example crash and you experience the crash and what it feels like and then you you troubleshoot how to get out of the plane and it helps people get over their fears there's also fears of height places where people can go to get over their fears of heights and you name it I want to make sure that you get supported so if you have questions beyond today's show definitely reach out to us at Living Full Out because we want to get you over your fears so you're in a more motivational place so you can live your life full out. Now, I promised you today our inspirational guest who went through a fear that a lot of people have, which is being kidnapped, and he actually experienced that. So Stanley Alpert is going to be joining us right now and sharing with us about how he was kidnapped, how he came out of it alive, but all the twists and turns that happened during his time, I believe 25 hours that he was with his kidnapper. So I'd like to welcome Stanley to the show. Thanks for having me on. Nancy. Hi, hi. How you doing? Good to have I'm you. Very good. How about you? Oh, you know what? I'm here with you, so I can't complain. I love it. But we are talking today, Stanley, about fear. And nobody has fear, right? But you... You went through one of the most scariest moments that people can have. I mean, what you went through being kidnapped um, by the gunpoint, I mean, that's something you see on Law & Order. That's not something we experience, but you did experience it. Can you share with us? Yes, I did. Yeah, so can you share with us? I know that you you lived in Manhattan at the time. It was late at night, about 11 o'clock. But share with us what happened in that moment. Well, the cool thing is is that my tale of, of, of horrible fear has helped me to live full out since you know since it happened so um i'll give you the bad side and then then i'm happy to talk about you know the positives that i feel came out of it um and basically you know i was i was uh, uh living in manhattan um uh in the village and i was on my home uh one night on my way home and it was an ice cold night so it's uh, an area right around the washington square arch Was- near washington square park it's normally very busy but this night, nobody was out on the street. And as I got up to the corner of 10th Street and 5th Avenue in Manhattan, I, I didn't notice anyone coming behind me. But all of a sudden, I felt a tug on my elbow. I spun around, and there was an automatic machine pistol in my <laughs> gut with two guys behind me, two two guns, one pistol, one one machine gun. And they, they pushed me into their car, which they had a third man in the car uh, sitting there on the street, uh, shut the door. And there I was, trapped. So one minute I had my freedom, the next minute I was a prisoner. And in that, in that minute, and in that minute, Stanley, that's a huge gulp of a moment. Did you think that you were going to die? Like this is it? I didn't think it then. I I guess in twenty five hours that I spent in captivity, um, I always knew that I could die. And there were a couple of moments where I really thought I was. T- just about to get killed mm-hmm. um, in that moment I didn't know in that moment it was just pure fear and shock and and just uh, not even understanding what was happening so where did they take you next so they they, they demanded my my wallet and and got my my uh, cash machine card they demanded the number to get access to my bank account um, and they drove us over to 23rd Street and 6th Avenue uh, to a Chase Bank and uh, the leader of the gang went inside and took out money using my card and my number. Mm-hmm. Um, and, uh, you know, then he comes back in and he, he, he was only able to get a limited amount because there's a daily limit. So then he wanted to know, you know, how else he could steal money from me. And, 
want to know how much was in my savings. And unfortunately for me, I had uh, I had a large uh, amount of money in my savings. Mm-hmm. So th- th- these guys thought they hit the jackpot, you know. So they were trying to figure out like how can they steal from this guy, namely me. Uh, so they're asking me, you know, um, uh, they, they were trying to see if they could if they could threaten somebody else to get my money. So they're asking me if I had a a, a wife. No. Did I have kids? No. Um, uh, did I have a girlfriend? No. You know, and and the funny thing is they they, they said, they, you know, they knew my age because they had my my license plate. They said, Stanley, you're 38 years old. Um, uh, you got no wife. You got no kids. <laughs> what the hell have you been doing, man? Uh, so there is so there is comedy to this tragedy. I'm seeing. Well, it's a, it's a tragic comedy. That's that's why I wrote the book, The Birthday Party. It's why I've optioned the movie rights to it. So we're, hopefully we're, it'll be made into a movie. But were you a lot Stanley? Of comedy in this hideously scary time uh, event. So were um, you Stanley? Were you so, were you blindfolded, or could you, or did you see all their faces? So at that moment. I, well, in the very beginning, I kind of got a little glimpse of their faces, really just brief. I was, I was actually very purposely looking down to not stare at their faces because mm-hmm. I knew that I would not want them to uh, to think that I, um, you know, would be able to recognize them. Mm-hmm. Uh, so, but I could see them a little bit, you know, and and then, um, you know, so the leader realizing that there's this money and savings, he can't get it because there's cash machine limit. He's got, and he can't figure out these other ways to steal from me. That's the moment that their plan shifted. And instead of just taking me to the bank and stealing from me, they decided to keep me. They were going to drive me to an apartment in Brooklyn, mm-hmm. um, uh, get more withdrawals from my cash card, take me to the bank in the morning if they had to at gunpoint. Um, you know, so that at that point, they blindfolded me with my own scarf, put me down in the, in the back seat of the car in a fetal position next to one of the thugs, and drove me off to Brooklyn. Wow. Wow, and you know, I, I know when you get to Brooklyn, <laughs> you're in captivity. A lot of a lot of things occurred there. I mean, you were blindfolded and just trying to take in as much of what was going on as you could, while trying to play it cool because obviously you didn't want to set them off. Exactly, exactly. I mean, the first, I mean, the first hour or two were really deadly serious. Um, there were the three men who got me on the street, and they kept informing me that they could pull the trigger and mm-hmm. my brains would be blasted all over the wall. They also told me that they were going to take me to the bank in the morning, and if I didn't um, cooperate with them and assist them to get my savings, that they would send somebody to my father's apartment. Oh, man. So, so they're really, they're really tormenting you with what, with what they could do to you. Stanley, I want you to stay with us because we have to take a commercial break, and there's so much more to your story. So stay with us, and everybody, we're going to be coming back with uh, Stanley Alpert shortly. And uh, just stay tuned. We'll be right back. You're listening to Living Full Out with Nancy Soleri. There are many sounds in your day-to-day life. There are sounds that wake you up. Sounds that make you smile. Sounds that energize you. And sounds that help you relax. But there are some sounds that can alert you to danger and can help save lives. Wireless emergency alerts, now on many mobile devices, use a unique sound and vibration to bring you information about severe weather events, amber alerts, or other emergencies in your area. With critical information from local sources you know and trust, you can be in the know, wherever you are. For more information, visit ready.gov slash alerts. Brought to you by FEMA and the Ad Council. Keyboard Cat, Hamilton the Pug, and Toast Meets World. 
These are some of the internet's most beloved pets. With millions of YouTube views, shares, Instagram likes, followers, and fans across the globe. But what do all these amazing pets have in common? Their stories started in a shelter. Start your story. Adopt a dog or cat today. Visit the shelterpetproject.org to find a shelter or adoptable pets near you. Training that pet to play the keyboard? Well, <laughs> that's entirely up to you. Visit the shelterpetproject.org and hear more about Hamilton the Pug, Toast, and Keyboard Cat's amazing adoption stories. Start a story. Adopt a shelter or rescue pet today. Your perfect pet is just a click away at the shelterpetproject.org. A public service announcement brought to you by Maddie's Fund, the Humane Society of the United States, and the Ad Council. As an 18-year-old, I let my mistakes kind of take over my life. I was 0.5 credits away from completing high school, and I didn't do it. Ten years later, at age 28, Jackie finished her high school diploma. When I found out that I was pregnant, I know that I had to do something for myself if I wanted to make her a better person and provide a better life for her. My family never stopped pushing for me to be better because they knew what I could become and who I could become as a person. My support team is amazing. The educational director, my sister, and even my seven-year-old daughter has just been more than the support that I could ask for. But I've been given an opportunity, and I'm just thankful for it. No one gets a diploma alone. If you're thinking of finishing your high school diploma, you have help. Find free adult education classes near you at finishyourdiploma.org. That's finishyourdiploma.org. Brought to you by the Dollar General Literacy Foundation and the Ad Council. What if I could tell you that a full-blown wildfire was going to occur tomorrow right where you live? Tell you exactly which neighborhoods it would engulf and how fast it would do it. The first thing you would do is talk with your loved ones and make a plan today. It's true. I can't tell you a wildfire will strike tomorrow. But shouldn't you make a plan anyway? Go to ready.gov slash communicate and make your emergency plan today. Don't wait. Communicate. Brought to you by FEMA and the Ad Council. Driving has a rhythm all its own. Don't wreck it with a text. Before you get behind the wheel, silence your phone. Or better yet, designate a texter. For more text-free driving tips, visit stoptextstoprex.org. Brought to you by the Ad Council and the National Highway Traffic Safety Administration. You're listening to Living Full Out with Nancy Soleri. As a trusted life coach, Nancy will help you overcome setbacks and embrace all life has to offer. Call in with questions live at 800-333-0001. Once again, that's 800-333-0001. And now, here's Nancy. Welcome back to the Living Full Out Show. I'm Nancy Soleri, and today we're talking about fear, all the different types of fears that we all experience. But today, our inspirational guest actually did encounter being kidnapped, of all things. And that is a fear that, for many of us, we have never experienced. We see it on TV, but he actually lived it, survived it, and is sharing his story with us today. So I'd like to welcome Stanley Alpert back to the show. Hi, Stanley. Hi. Hi. So, um, so I want to pick back up where we were in the story. So your kidnappers, after kidnapping you, and he was in Manhattan when he got kidnapped, um, they took you to this place in Brooklyn. At this point, you were blindfolded. Now, I know in the first couple of hours, they tormented you about all the people that they were going to kill and kill you and all the things that they were going to do to you. But then it kind of shifted. They kind of warmed up to you. What was it that made them go from wanting to torture you, put a lot of fear into you, to almost wanting to be your buddy. Yeah, so, uh, you know, I suppose even even criminals are people, and uh, and they naturally have, you know, flows in their personality. And one of the things I think about living full out, in terms of uh, you're teaching your audience to, to uh, be able to adapt to various circumstances, is you have to be flexible. So... I was petrified and really, just really just horrified at the thought that they would kill my father by breaking every bone in his body. But, you know, then an hour or two later, they, they bring in McDonald's, you know, because they're hungry. And then they smoked marijuana, and, and, and these, these three young women showed up. 
who were prostitutes. The leader of the gang was their pimp. So the, I was blindfolded. Thankfully, I couldn't see it, but they had sexual relations with the female. And so then they've had marijuana. They've had they've had uh, 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 sex. They've 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 had their their full um, uh, of, of food. And now they're relaxing. So they want to start playing with me. So they're like, Stanley, what would we be doing right now if we if we hadn't kidnapped you on the street? And I said. Actually, tonight's my birthday. I'm going to be going out with some friends. And they thought that was the funniest thing they ever heard. But, oh, God, we kidnapped the guy on his birthday. You know, obviously they used more obscene words than I'm using with you. Of course. Um, and um, and then they decided, hey, family, it's your birthday. You deserve a nice present for your birthday. How about some blankety-blank from these girls, Stanley? And, you know, a lot of people I tell that to now think it's funny, but actually it was just terribly scary for me. They were having fun with me, but I wasn't having fun with it because I was being threatened. I could not have my dignity removed from me by by having, uh, you know, uh, that kind of a violation take place. Sure. So, uh, so at the same time that they were being friendly, it was, it was still on the razor's edge the whole time. Now, it, now it's interesting. So through this whole time, they they finally decide that they're that they're not going to keep you, that they are going to give you back. But it wasn't just because they were so generous. They found out what your profession was, and that made them realize, uh oh, we picked the wrong guy. Well, the truth is, it's really kind of stupid to kidnap an assistant U.S. attorney off the street. <laughs> Probably What's the luck? With a different profession, right? <laughs> so, so I was a federal prosecutor, and uh, I did primarily civil work, uh, environmental work, um, but, um, you know, they didn't realize that. And, you know, uh, they knew that the FBI would be after them, and they were very much afraid of that. And, and, and they should be, as they should be. Now, it's interesting. They decided to finally, that they were going to give, that they're, you know, let you go the next day. And so the next day comes and you're waiting and waiting and waiting and waiting. But finally, they did decide they were going to take you and, and drop you off somewhere. But <laughs> that story is actually very funny. Not funny, uh, actually, what you experienced. But you literally thought on that ride to set you free that you were also going to die. Share with us what happened then. Yeah. Yeah, they thought that they told me they were going to take me back to where they got me, and they drove for only a few minutes, and they stopped the car, and the leader goes out, and I hear duct tape being pulled off of a roll that he got out of the trunk, and I was petrified. I thought they were going to duct tape my mouth, uh, sh- uh, shoot me in the head, and and throw me in the river, and I was wrong. Actually, someone had broken into the criminal's car overnight, and there was plastic covering the window, and. The guy was just taping up the window, so he wasn't planning to kill me. He was just um, trying to make sure he could drive without the plastic flapping. But I can imagine that I can imagine the level of fear that you were feeling at that time. I mean, you you just survived that twenty five hours, but now they're going to kill you. You know. Um, so what happened? So, you know, I, I do describe this yeah. in, in my book. I worked very hard on this in the, in the birthday party. That that uh, um, that moment when I heard the tape coming off the roll. It was the moment that my entire life flashed in front of my eyes. And mm. I felt like, like just a blackness came over me because my life was over in that moment. It was done. As far as I was concerned, I was dead. And that is a scary crazy. moment. Right. Yeah. So, so they finally did drive off again, and they took you to where they were going to set you free. And what was that like? How did you finally get out of that car, and what happened? Yeah, I, I got out. They told me to walk. I, I wasn't sure if they were going to still put a slug in my back, uh, but they didn't. And um, and I ran off to the, a nearby commercial strip, started making phone calls, eventually found out that a whole crew of, of, of NYPD cops and FBI agents were already at my apartment looking for me. And, um, you know, it was really the happiest moment of my life because I was on the verge of death. I really thought I was dead. And then suddenly my life was giving back to me. And honestly, Nancy, uh, my moments since then uh, have been focused on that in a positive way, that, that, that every moment is precious to me, and it's a, it's a wisdom that I feel I was able to get by the fact that life was almost taken from me. Wow. And, li- and, and to, to have gotten through those 24 hours to being tortured, fear just slapped in your face right and left with what they were going to do to you, and to actually survive it, I mean, that's that's extraordinary. And and what advice do you have for people 
listening today. I mean, again, hopefully nobody listening today is kidnapped, abducted, anything like that. But what if somebody is at that crossroad moment? They feel that gun against their head, against their back. What should they do? What could you have done differently? Well, I mean, there's the literal and then the metaphorical, right? I mean, uh, you know, I would say, you know, literally there wasn't much else I could do. I had guns pointing at me. I mean, you definitely, if anyone's literally uh, being asked to get into a car, the, the rule is never get into the car. You will be dead if you're in the car. So, and I broke the rule. I managed to get out. But the general rule, if you talk to law enforcement, is is don't get in the car. So that's for sure. But in terms of going through a, a kidnapping or other life stresses, first of all, you need to understand that you have far more strength in your body and your soul and your brain than you possibly can imagine. And I learned that in those 25 hours. You know, I'm a person who likes to go to sleep at night, but I did you know, because my life was on the line. Mm. You know, so you have far more strength. I stuck with it. I stayed strong. I negotiated for my very life. I, I, I made nice with those guys, even though they were threatening to kill me, and they didn't want to kill me, so they let me go. So that's, you know, that's sort of uh, um, the first part, is you really have more strength than you can imagine. And the other thing is when you're going through really difficult times, take a very deep breath. Think of yourself as a powerful yogi. You know, take some deep yoga breath and just tell yourself, I can see my way through this. And that that strength of purpose allows, you know, Navy SEALs to get through what they go through and allowed me to, to, to get through what I went through. That is great advice and applicable to so many events in our life. And, you know, one thing that you did very well, super smart, and perhaps some of your training, but when you were captive... You were listening for every little bit of evidence that you could possibly retain to be able to eventually tell the police. Did you did you just instinctively do that, or is that something you knew to do? You know, it's kind of like if you uh, if you um, kidnap a plumber, you'll get your uh, you know you'll get your sink fixed. I mean, they kidnapped a lawyer, a federal prosecutor, so I just did what I naturally do. Uh, you know, but the interesting thing was, I really think that that whole practice of gathering clues and trying to fight for myself so that in case they didn't kill me, I would get them in the end. That actually helped me very much psychologically. The, the people that study uh, post-traumatic stress disorder will tell you that it, it almost always comes from a person who felt completely helpless in their situation. And I felt quite helpless, but not completely helpless. There was something I could do to make my situation better, which was to sit there and gather clues. And every single thing they said, every single thing they did, if it was a remote clue to who they were or where we were, I logged it in my brain. And then, you know, 20 hours later, I was downloading it to the police. And I'm just curious, with, with just a few minutes left we have here in the interview, how did this change you? Did this make you more nervous, more protective, more guarded? Or did it change you to be less fearful? Well... Uh, the answer is complex. Um, it changed me, I'd say, that for my, I lead my life in a fuller, better way now. I must admit that in the months after the incident, I was definitely more fearful. I walked the streets of New York with fear. I, you know, I, um, uh, I watched out for any, you know, really bad-looking guys. Um, so I'd say in the months after, it, 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 it had a real backlash, a real, a real negative effect. But over time, that faded. And then what came out of it was, you know, maybe I was sleepy about certain things in my life. Maybe I wasn't attending to, you know, building a family or, you know, having a dog or, or you know, or getting out into the country more often. Maybe I wasn't doing those things that ought to have been important to me, but that were lost somehow. And being kidnapped and almost murdered woke me up and made me realize that the things that I really want to do are things that I need to do now because the, the fact that no one understands unless you've almost unless you've been almost killed mm -hmm. is that life is short and you just it you're having it is a temporary feature. No one all the all the living people think they're going to live forever, but they're wrong. So the point is, is while you have it, you really have to grab for it. You really have to make use of it in the best way for you. Wow, well, you know, Stanley. I mean, I mean, th th those words are great. I mean, that just that's a perfect message to end on today. 
I, I want to thank you for being on the show and uh, sharing your story with us. Thank you so much. Thank you, and thanks for your great work. Oh, thank you, Stanley. Have a great day. Okay, be well. Bye. Everybody, that was Stanley Alpert sharing his story being kidnapped, and that is, uh, that's, that's a fear of mine. And uh, so thank you, Stanley, for sharing that with us. When we come back, we're going to be taking your calls. And again, this is the Living Full Out Show. I'm Nancy Solari. We'll be right back. Well, Jason, I've got to tell you, you're pretty much everything this company is looking for in an entry-level candidate. Great. Your resume isn't quite what we're used to, but you've got a fantastic work ethic. Thank you. And I'm impressed by how you carry yourself. So, should we talk about the job? Uh, What? The job? Oh, sorry. Yeah, I have no way of recruiting or even meeting you. This interview didn't happen. It may sound ridiculous, and that's because it kind of is. There's a huge pool of talent your company is missing out on. Meet the grads of life. Who are they? Talent worth knowing about. Young adults of unique determination and experience. An ideal fit for your company in an entry-level position, internship, or even mentorship. They might not have every qualification you typically look for, but they're exactly who your company needs. Man, we really could have used him. Don't miss out on a resource many innovative companies have already discovered. Go to gradsoflife.org to learn how to find, cultivate, and train this great pool of untapped talent. Brought to you by the Ad Council and gradsoflife.org. The following message is about Medicaid and CHIP, free or low-cost health coverage for kids and teens. Enrollment is open year-round. Hey, voice lady, give me the mic. Um, okay. Hey, DJ, let's switch up the music. That's better. So listen up, moms and dads out there. There are these programs called Medicaid and CHIP. They offer free or low-cost health coverage for kids. Things like doctor and dentist visits, prescriptions, and shots are covered. All the stuff that keeps kids like me healthy and in charge. So, as you can tell, a covered kid is a confident kid. And it means confident parents, too. To learn more about affordable health coverage for your family, visit healthcare.gov or call 1-877-KIDS-NOW. That's 1-877-543-7669. Yep, you could do something big for your family today because enrollment is open year-round. This has been a message from the U.S. Department of Health and Human Services. And Sophia. They're going to jump out of trees. You can't stop them. They'll go down the slide head first. They'll make parachutes out of sheets. They'll balance on things that are impossible to balance on, like the back of a couch or a windowsill or a scooter seat. They'll run with sharp objects. They'll run into walls. They'll climb things that won't hold their weight. They'll put their fingers in places where they could get smashed. They'll drive their tricycles down steep hills. They'll bounce balls off their faces. They'll step on each other. They'll jump on each other. They'll invent whole new ways to put themselves in jeopardy. But one of the most dangerous things kids will do happens while they're sitting perfectly still. Kids who ride in a car without a booster seat are much more likely to suffer serious or fatal injury during a crash than kids in boosters. But amazingly, 80% of all kids who need them aren't in them. After a toddler seat and until they're four foot nine, boost your kids and don't let them down. Go to BoosterSeat.gov to learn more about the importance of boosters. A message from the U.S. Department of Transportation and the Ad Council. Hey, Nick Cannon here. So we all know we've got a lot of talent in America. But unfortunately, there's something else we've got way too much of. Childhood hunger. 17 million kids struggle with it in this country. That's why the Feeding America nationwide network of food banks gather surplus food to give hope to hungry kids and their families. Join me in supporting Feeding America and your local food bank at feedingamerica.org. A message from Feeding America and the Ad Council. We are your pets, and this song's dedicated to those people who don't have health insurance yet. Enroll, we say. Sake. Health insurance is now affordable and covers prescriptions, hospitalizations, and preventive care. Visit GetCoveredAmerica.org to learn more. And take care, people! 
Brought to you by Get Covered America and the Ad Council. To live in fear has you feeling limited, as though you can't breathe, as though it's hopeless, you have nowhere to go. But you want to cast that fear aside. You want to bring power back into your life so you can live life full out. Rather than letting fear, which stands for false evidence appearing real, control your life, tell that fear you are not real and you're not going to hold me back from living my life full out. Listening to Living Full Out with Nancy Soleri. As a certified life coach, Nancy can help you to overcome challenges and start living full out. Call in with questions live at 800 333 0001. Once again, that's 800 333 0001. And now, here's Nancy. Well, thank you again for joining us today. This is the Living Full Out show. I can't believe we're in the final segment. It's just blows my mind how fast the show goes, but we are talking about fear today, a topic that's heavy and scary and stressful, but it is stressful. It is scary if we let it take control of our life, if we let it hold us back from living full out, but calling into shows like this, getting motivated by guests like Stanley, who we just had in our show, that allows all of us to get over this hump of fear, this limiting belief of fear, and allows us to engage in life in a promising, hopeful, motivational way. We're going to go back to the phone lines now and check in with one of our callers. Hello, welcome to the Living Full Out Show. Hi, welcome to the show. Hello. Hi, thank you for calling in. How can I help you today? so much for taking my call. I really appreciate it. Of course. Well, I have a, I have a dilemma. Um, my husband and I moved to Florida about nine years ago. And one of the reasons we moved down is I have el- elderly parents that live here. And when my two grown daughters come down to visit us from New York, um, they want to spend a lot of time with my parents because they have great memories and they're very close and they want to see them quite a bit and even sleep over there when they come to visit. However, my husband does not get along with my parents that well and doesn't want to spend as much time with them as my my kids do. And there's always a drama when they come to visit because my, my children want to, us all to go out together every night for dinner and see each other, you know, quite often while they're here. My husband doesn't want to go along with it and he wants them to make a choice, you know, spending time with him and me, you know, versus being being with them. And it's, it's, it's mm. very hard on me, and I feel like I'm stuck in the middle. Let me ask you a question. Obviously, these are your parents, and, you know, it's not your mm-hmm. husband's parents, your parents, but when your husband puts down that ultimatum, how does that make you feel? Well, it makes me feel bad about it. That, he's, that he wants to that 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 he that he doesn't want to. I feel as though he should just go along with us, mm-hmm. and everyone should be together. Mm-hmm. And I feel that he should put himself out, you know, for the short time that my children are here visiting. Mm-hmm. Okay, so I want you to understand uh, tone and words. Okay, so you and mm-hmm. so you so a couple times in that explanation explanation you said should he should he should. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Now, whether it's your husband or whether it's your kids, we should never should people. Okay. Now I'm not putting mm-hmm. them back on you. I'm helping you with, with having these conversations with the different people involved. Mm-hmm. Okay. So in mm-hmm. life, we should never should people. We should never uh, tell them that they can't do something. Everybody mm-hmm. is going to have their reasons for why they're functioning. That's that's the amazing thing about a family, right? Everybody is a family, mm-hmm. so they have common mm-hmm. traits together, but we're all individual people. So your husband, when he is reacting like this, it, it most likely comes from somewhere. It might come from the fact that he doesn't see his parents enough. Maybe it comes from the fact that you know, he, he, he misses this quality time with his family. And, and although it's, although you're all a family, sometimes people still become that little boy inside that little boy wishes that that they were with his family. Do you see what I'm saying? 
So Mm -hmm. what I would do is I would invite you to, you know, pick the moments when the family needs to be all together, maybe birthdays, holidays, pick the main moments. And then other times I would just say to your husband, you know what? I understand that you don't want to, you know, don't want to spend all this time with my parents and that's okay. I'm not going to force you. But at the same time, we're on precious time with them. And if our kids feel that they want to spend time with their grandparents, we got to let them. And what I would do is I would carve out mom and dad night, a special night. So your husband feels good. And then, you know, have some quality time with their grandparents. And then maybe there's time that you can all be together. But unfortunately, you're going to have to kind of manage that. But, Mm -hmm. you know, it's okay because there's a lot of love here. Your dad, I mean, mean, your husband just wants quality time with his kids. That's a great thing. Your kids Mm -hmm. want to spend ample time with their grandparents. That's a great thing, Mm -hmm. right? So this dilemma doesn't need to be any bigger than it already is. What you want to just do is make sure that everybody gets some quality time and feels valued. And your husband just needs to feel that. So if you acknowledge that, and maybe when your kids are coming to town, there's one dedicated time with their dad, that will go a long way. Okay. Right. Okay. okay. Well, uh, that, sounds, that sounds really good. Perfect. Well, thank you so much for calling in. All right. Thank you very much. I you, really appreciate your your um, insightness, insightfulness. Well, that's what we're here for. And um, okay. again, you got a lot of love in your family. Feel good about that. Okay. Mm-hmm. Thank you so much. You got it. Thank you. So I want to thank everybody today who called into the show. I mean, that last caller, all the ones in the earlier in the show, it's all about getting past these fears, getting past these challenges, these dilemmas, and making life feel heavier than it needs to be. I want everybody listening today to take those fears, take those dilemmas, and just say, get off my shoulders, get off my back, get out of my mind. And set yourself free to live full out. I want to thank our entire Living Full Out family here in the studio. we got Mindy and Sam and Debbie and Rich. Everybody puts the show on. Thank you to Stanley, our inspirational guest, Stanley Alpert. And if you want to see or listen to today's show again, go to livingfullout.com. Click on the radio show tab. All of our shows and episodes are waiting there for you. And if you have questions about today, reach out to us. Send us an email to connect at livingfullout.com. I hope everybody has a wonderful day. Here's to you living your life full out. (laughs) 